that's from are France. You, really. Here's a question. Are you a registered organ donor? Well, if you are not, this uh, next film might make you change your mind. Here's Wendy Robbins. 33-year-old John Carter from Sunderland was a happily married family man. In 2008, he was diagnosed with a brain tumour. He died just four weeks later. He was a good son. He couldn't be any better. Just so happy and always had a smile on his face. To lose a child is the worst thing that could ever happen to any parent. I defy anybody to, to say anything different to that. The family agreed to donate John's organs for transplant. Eight miles away in North Shields was Scott Rutherford, who'd been born with a rare heart defect. I couldn't go out to, to, to play. I used to kind of just sit in my bedroom and look out the window and see people riding bikes and playing football. Any form of physical exercise, I would have put myself at risk of, of, of a major heart attack. By the time he was 15, Scott had endured hundreds of operations and procedures. Without a heart transplant, he would die. My health got worse and worse. But I mean, I never really slept because I was terrified to go to sleep because I, I thought I'm not going to wake up in the morning and I thought I thought I thought I was going to die every, every day. In September 2008, Scott was told a heart had become available. The transplant was a success. I felt alive. I didn't feel, I felt like I was dead beforehand. I was just kind of floating about with a, a weak heartbeat and no form of life at all. But I pinched a stethoscope from one of the doctors and I used to sleep in a night time and I put in my ears and I would hold the stethoscope to my chest and I'd just lie there for hours and just listen at it all for hours upon hours upon hours. Five years later, Scott was asked to speak at a service for organ donors at St George's Church in Newcastle. I got up and I told my story of like when I was to what my life was like prior, prior transplant and then what it was like now. Listening at the back of the church was John's mum, Frida. She knew very little about the person who had received her son's heart, except he was called Scott and he was doing well. Donor families are only given limited information about organ recipients to protect anonymity. We sat down and I just start flitting through the order of service. And on the second page, it had Scott Rutherford and that, that name just jumped off the page towards me, you know, and I thought, that's him, that's him. Scott got up and he sang and he sang, he sang, and then he said, he sang Scott of the family of John. I thanked uh, the family of John and then I tapped my chest and I said I would be eternally thankful and forever grateful. And that was it. Everything slotted into place. I couldn't get over to anyone. That was him, you know, and I, I needed, I needed to touch him, I needed to feel him, I needed to give him a cuddle. Frida asked a transplant coordinator if she could meet Scott there and then. The coordinator agreed to approach him. She sat me down and she said, I don't know how, how to tell you this. You don't know, as mum, dad and, and your uncle are sat in the back of the church. And I could see she was speaking to us, but I just couldn't respond because I was just in that much shock. The staff from the transplant service had never known a donor family and recipient to meet by chance like this. Scott prepared himself to meet Frida. It was just so unreal. And I just kind of opened my arms and Frida just fell straight into them. And then I said, can I feel your heartbeat? And he got me hand and he opened his jacket and he put his hand, my hand on his heart. That's all I ever wanted. My wish came true that day. As my son's heart was beating in Scott's body. The love my son had, Scott had that love, you know. I feel it's responsibility to myself because I was given this second chance of life, so now I feel like I need to live life and grab every possible opportunity that I can and do it to the fullest. If I could have picked anybody in the whole world to have my son's heart, I would have picked Scott. Well, and joining us are Frida with daughter Julie and Scott with mum Wendy. Frida, Scott, thank you so much for uh, allowing us to hear this story. And think, I mean, you told it in such a, an incredible way. I'm sure it would have touched so many people out there. But you have this remarkable connection. Frida, how, how close have you become? 
Oh, very, very, very close. We have a bond that nobody could break now. He calls us his heart, mum and dad, and his heart sister. And we have, I, I, I love him. I love him. I love them all. I love his brothers. I love his mum. We go out for meals together. Yeah. We spend social times together. And he hasn't got a sister, but he's got a sister now. In Julie. Yeah. yeah. And they often go out for meals together. And, you know, it's just an extended family. Yeah. You know, through it, how it happened mm -hmm. is just a miracle. It's a well, that's the extraordinary oh, thing. You, you were in that church, and Scott, that's the first time that you'd, you'd uh, gone there, and it was a last-minute yeah. thing, wasn't it? You turned yeah. up at that church. No, it was just I got, a, I got a phone call from a transplant coordinator, it was Lynn, and, and there she asked to, to sing and speak at his church service, which, which she calls to, like, to do my thing, because I often speak at transplant conferences and yeah. things like such, so I agreed to go along, and I got up and told my story of what my life was like prior transplant, and how having the transplant then changed my life and how I managed to go on to study and do what I wanted to do and yeah you and know, how is how is your heart now and how are you feeling do you still do you still feel the need to listen to it oh yeah yeah I, I, I'm always listening to it I was for comfort I put it like I put my hand on it on my chest like on, on, on an evening and yeah. and just and, and, and feel it because when I first had the transplant it, the heartbeat would keep me awake Aye. and I'd have to kind of get used to a strong heartbeat in a sense and yeah I took a stethoscope off one of the doctors and I'd sit for hours with a stethoscope in my ear and hold it to my chest and I couldn't believe that I'd went from being blue and feeling like, well, in a sense, dead to then being warm and my hands were, my face was warm and I had a strong heartbeat and my yeah. fingertips were pink and it was just surreal. And Wendy, obviously there's reasons for anonymity that we heard in the film yeah. there, but did you ever imagine that it would turn out like this if you did get no. to meet? No, no, definitely not. Just amazing, amazing people. Absolutely yeah. fantastic. And you've got, I mean, Wendy, Frida, you've said that you all go away on holidays uh, and what have you together, and there's some lovely footage of the first time that you met uh, over in, in, was it Canada? Canada, 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 yeah. It's amazing. It, what, what, what an experience. Mm -hmm. I mean, I couldn't be any more thankful to Rocky Mountaineer and the work for the ch a fantastic charity called Transplant Sport. Yeah. And they arranged the whole thing, and it was just... It was the most yeah, yeah. amazing, breathtaking, but very, very emotional journey I would, well, either we have ever embarked mm -hmm. on. And I think we cried enough tears to actually fill Lake Louise to be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, because that's all you did. But well, listen, thank you so much once again for coming along thank and you. talking to us. Yeah. And this way, obviously, of meeting is, uh, isn't exactly normal. But, uh, Alex, you're with two families who, uh, who did things in a more orthodox fashion, yeah? Yeah, that's right. We've got donor family, uh, Pauline and Claire, and we've got recipient Abigail and mum Sarah here and Lynn, transplant coordinator. So, as we know, uh, each family is given anonymity to begin with. But if they do choose to meet up, then Lynn, how do you help them make that happen? Well, I think it's so important that they have an opportunity to say thank you mm -hmm. for the most precious gift, the gift of life. So, we facilitate, we'll let them write a card or a letter, and we pass it on to the donor coordinator so we'll pass it on to the donor family right, okay. and normally that's where it stops okay and abigail you received uh, pauline's late son's liver didn't you and you wrote to pauline and the family did you think really hard about doing that and what was the main reason obviously to say thank you but why did you want to get in touch so badly i always wanted to say thank you from the mm. start like if it didn't get anything back from them, that was fine but at least they knew that i was okay and they had done such a great thing yeah and you were grateful yeah yes yeah, yeah. Definitely. and claire we heard there frida talking about how close the families yes. have become and it's the same, isn't it, in your case? It is, yes. So we consider Abby and her family to be part of our extended family and uh, it made perfect sense for me to ask Abby to be my bridesmaid at my wedding uh, in May 2013. Uh, so me and my husband were so honoured to have Abby there as part of our special day and it just made the day absolutely perfect. Yes, I'm sure it did. And Sarah, for any other families who've been through something similar and considering getting in touch with a donor family, what would you say to them? It's not something for everybody, but for us and our family, we thought it was something we wanted to do. We wanted to say thank you, Paul and Claire, and I hope we bring you some peace of mind. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you. It's incredible, uh, incredibly emotional over here. Pauline, you were right there. It's, yeah. a, difficult, it's, it's a difficult, it's a difficult film for you to it's watch. So, it's so um, heart-touching, isn't mm. it? You know, in, to say that 
and for Abigail to write to me mm. to say she was so sorry about the loss of my son but she could not thank us enough for the gift of life and a chance of a second you know mm. she had a second chance yeah. and this is what organ donation is all about yes. it's giving somebody a precious gift of life and please sign that register because there are so many people that need organs and we don't want to think about it but if you need if your child needed an organ or you somebody you knew it it just makes sense to give them a second chance thank you so much to all the families who've come in to talk about it thank you so much and as you said three people a day die waiting for organs don't they so tell your family now what your wishes would be yes Exactly. Uh, if you'd like more information on organ donation, there's links on our website, bbc.co.uk slash The One Show. Now, Matt, I saw him scuttle past and he's upside somewhere. Matt, what do you like to do? 